Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moin. We are going to discuss IR spectroscopy in this video. And this is the part 3 in which we will discuss specifically the instrumentation of IR spectroscopy. So let's start instrumentation. There are two main types of IR spectrophotometers. The first one is one which is being used since long and what is going to happen in it actually the IR radiations here are dispersed by the means of diffraction grading to separate it into individual frequencies and in this way the IR spectrum is recorded and this type of IR spectrophotometer is called dispersive IR spectrophotometer while if we talk about the second one it was developed in late 20th century and what happened in it actually in it the whole region of IR is used simultaneously to produce an interferogram and this interferogram is then Fourierly transformed to get IR spectrum and this one is called Fourier transformed spectrophotometer or in short notation it is called FTIR but in this video we will discuss in detail the dispersive IR spectrophotometer so here are the main components of dispersive IR spectrophotometers. It contains radiation source, then sample compartment, then optical chopper, monochromator, detector, amplifier, and readout device. Students, some of the parts like sample compartment, optical chopper, and monochromator these are same as we have discussed earlier in uv visible instrumentation what do you say uv visible spectrophotometer so my video is available on this topic so for these components you can watch that video so now we will discuss the rest of the parts here so here's the schematic diagram of dispersive ir spectrophotometer you can see here is the source of radiation so the radiation is separated into two beams of equal intensity so one behaves as sample beam means it passes through the sample while other behaves as reference beam and both of beams then they fall here on optical chopper then the next part is monochromator if we want to study the wavelength of our interest then we will use this monochromator and the next part is detector so optical chopper it makes to fall both of these sample and reference beam alternately onto the detector the next part is amplifier and with which amplifies the signal and with amplifier there is attached a servo motor and with servo motor there is attached the optical wedge this optical wedge can move in or out so in this way it may suppress the intensity of this reference beam according to need and with this optical wedge there is attached the recorder pen so with its movement up and down the pen also move up and down and in this way we get the final IR spectrum now we will discuss these parts one by one so first of one is source of radiation so two sources for IR radiations are commonly used and these are Nernst filament and globar so if we talk about the Nernst filament so what is the composition of Nernst filament it is actually composed of mixtures of oxides of zirconium thorium and yttrium means Nernst filament it contains the oxides of zirconium thorium and yttrium and these are present in a hollow rod you can see here the rod 
and what is the dimension of this rod it is 2 millimeter in diameter and 5 centimeter in length so this is 2 millimeter diameter and 5 centimeter in length so this one nuns filament is being used in IR spectrophotometer so this is the journal what do you say how it looks like the nuns filament but this design is being used in IR spectrophotometer now the next source is globar which is shown over here what is the composition of globar it is a bonded silicon carbide rod so there is silicon carbide inside and what is the dimension of this rod 7 millimeter in diameter and 5 centimeter in length so these sources these can be used for IR radiation IR radiations on heating electrically at about 1000 to 1800 degree centigrade these rods emit IR radiations now as I mentioned earlier the radiation produced by the radiation source is divided into two beams of equal intensity one serves as sample beam while other as a reference beam the absorption by the sample is directly measured by from difference in intensities of two beams so there are different methods for calculating the absorption by our sample so the intensity difference usually here measured by optical null method after passing through the sample area reference beam passes through an optical wedge shown in the schematic diagram and uh, as I mentioned earlier that this wedge can move in or out of the reference beam so this wedge it can limit the amount of radiation that passes through it by being driven into the beam means when the wedge will move downward into the reference beam it will limit it can limit the amount of reference beam the two beams then fall on optical chopper which upon rotation causes the sample and reference beam to reflect alternately to monochromator and then to detector So as I mentioned earlier that the parts like sample holder, optical chopper and monochromator this have already been explained in my previous video of UV visible spectroscopy and actually the instrumentation of UV visible spectroscopy. So if someone has not seen that video so he or she can watch that video for these parts so we are moving towards detector the detector works on the principle of thermocouple and what is the principle if two wires of dissimilar metals like antimony and bismuth are joined together at the ends and the difference in temperature is created between the two ends at the junction the current is caused to flow in the wires so this is the principle of thermocouples thus a thermocouple detector it converts the IR energy into electrical energy mean when IR radiation fall on it current is generated and the intensity of current is proportional to the intensity of radiation falling falling on thermocouple so if the intensity of radiation is high the intensity of current will be greater and vice versa now we will see about amplifier optical wedge and recorder so when sample has absorbed radiation of a particular frequency the detector will be receiving alternately an intense reference beam and a weak sample beam so what does it mean so here are two radiations one is sample beam other is reference beam so if sample has absorbed some part of radiation then the radiation coming out from here 
that is weak beam weak sample beam and here is no absorption so it is an intense beam and both of these beams are made to fall on detector alternately so detector is getting both of these beams alternately as intense beam and weak beam intense beam and weak beam in this way the current produced on detector is an alternating current and the next part which is amplifier so amplifier has been designed in such a way that it can sense only alternating current then the amplifier is coupled to a small servo motor you can see in the diagram which drives the optical wedge into reference beam so it can dra drive this optical wedge inside this reference beam until the detector receives the radiation of equal intensity now I will explain it as I mentioned earlier that here is the weak sample beam and intense reference beam so amplifier or servo motor make to move this optical wedge inside and when this optical wedge move inside this reference beam so intensity of reference beam start decreasing and till when this process continues until the intensity of both of these beams become equal means their difference that becomes zero this optical wedge is coupled to recorder pen so that the movement of the wedge in and out of the reference beam is accompanied movement of the pen on the paper which thus records the absorption bands and in this way we get the IR spectrum if there is present no sample in the way of sample beam then there will be there will be no absorption means there will be 100% transmittance so the intensity of both beams means sample and reference beam is already equal so there will be no movement of optical wedge and we will get a straight baseline means no peak will be obtained now the double beam optical null IR spectrophotometer it is not useful for low intensity radiations means when a strongly absorbing band is recorded the energy that strikes the detector is too weak to be accurately measured means if our sample is too much absorbing IR radiation then the signal reaching towards the detector is very much weak so in this case this spectrophotometer will not work and it has been estimated that generally the transmittance below 30 percent are inaccurate and in such cases this optical null method this will not work so we must have to use then ratio recording instrument so dear students this is all about the instrumentation of IR spectroscopy like my video and subscribe my channel and thanks for watching thank you very much